Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and check out this pollen. Look at that gorgeous bit of pollen right there. We have blackberry pollens in there. Um, we have the, it's not a trumpet vine. I can't remember the name of it, but it looks very similar to a trumpet vine. Laurel will tell me after the video. Cross vine. Thank you, Laurel. And this is all from a day and a half. Whoops, we got a bee down in here. But what are we going to do with this right here? Actually, let me just take that whole tray out. We are going to save this to feed to our queens. And I have got a bee that doesn't like me, so I'm going to put my veil on. Because contrary to popular belief, I don't like getting stung. All right, so you can eat this. You can sell this. This is the fats. This is the protein. This is the trace minerals. This is the macro minerals. This is what really makes more bees. And you can have all kinds of nectar coming in, but if you don't have healthy, diverse pollens coming in, your colony is not going to want to grow. The main reason we harvest this is we'll take it and we'll store it in a Ziploc bag. We're going to stick this in the freezer. And then we are going to take a coffee grinder and grind it real fine when we use it and mix it with some of our honey because we don't want to use anybody else as honey because of diseases and possible other types of transmissions we don't want. But we are going to mix that together and in summer when we don't have those diverse healthy pollens we are going to feed this back in a patty form to our queen rearing colonies because our queens need the best nutrition and we try to make sure that they get it. Nothing beats the real thing but yes I eat this in yogurt you can sell this it's a there's a lot of different reasons why um, maybe you should collect pollen from your hives but real quick at the end of the video I'm going to let you know about a discount on these pollen traps. So this pollen right here if you use it for your queen rearing, it's, I think it's going to help you out. If you eat it, it's healthier for you. If you sell it, that's just extra money. Some people are charging in the bigger cities $18, $20 a pound for this, and this is just a little over a day and a half. I don't know exactly what this is right here, but it's a pound at least. It's a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter, something like that. And another advantage of collecting this, if you're like us and you get a lot of pollen in your springs, it can cause some backfilling of that pollen as in the form of bee bread in that brood nest down here. And if it gets too full down in here, then you run into the queen running out of room to lay. It causes increased chances for them to want to swarm. So if you have those times of the year that happen around here in April especially, you can help clear that brood nest out. But we don't want to take too much. So how do we use this thing? This one bee just doesn't like me very much. I like to run mine no more than two days on, two days off. Um, that works really good. This is a powerful colony right here. They are occupying all of these boxes. This is completely full of honey. They're halfway drawn out on these foundations and this is mostly full of honey. We're probably gonna add another super today. It's a strong colony. You don't wanna be taking pollen away from a five frame colony, a 10 frame colony. You want something that's past, I think, 10 frames strong and preferably close to two deeps worth of bees before you start taking their pollen away. There's a lot of variables here. Some people have long pollen flows. We have great pollen from typically March to about June. And then we get some usually around September. If it's a good year, we can take a little bit there. But again, only the strongest colonies, and especially in around winter, we don't want to take too much because that is being used to feed those bees and they need extra. They're not just raising new bees, they're raising winter bees. And what allows the bees to be able to go through winter is the bees changing physiologically into a winter bee. That means they hopefully have extremely packed fat bodies, which is an organ of theirs, and that allows them to live longer and go through winter. So we don't want to take a whole lot in fall unless we know that we can afford it. So I'm just saying all this to be careful because you can take too much from the bees. 
So there needs to be a balance there. But on a good colony like this, in the middle of a good flow, I find two days on, two days off works, or one day on, one day off. And this trap is really nice and easy. We've got this tray right here that can be used to section it off as a bottom board. Let me grab the smoker. And we are going to now take it out of pollen trapping commission. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out this tray and I'm going to smoke a little bit down in there. Just try to get some of the bees out of the way. So here you can see the tray as it is pulled out and the bees have to work through these little holes right here. It's amazing that they can go through those little things. And as they do it, they can fit just fine, but the pollen baskets can't. And that's where it drops down into that tray of uh, pollen above. So now that we've taken this out, we must do this because there's that little entrance that inserted into. And we've got this red piece right here and we just slide it into place. If you don't put that back, they'll start using this as a, another entrance. And then you'll have bees going in the front and the back. And if you want them in the front, let me tell you, they're going to use the back. That's just the way they, they roll. So the nice thing is, and you can't see it, this is also a screened bottom board. If you take this out right here, wow, they already collected a little bit of pollen while we were talking. Whoops. But you take that out, now you have a screened bottom board. And the, the other thing is, you have an IPM tray. So if you, um, like say you treat with oxalic acid or formic acid or any of your treatments, you can put some oil down here like vegetable oil, canola oil, and any of the mites. You just, you know, just wipe a really thin film of it on here and then they'll stick to this and it, you can kind of see what your mite drop is. That's really handy. Again, in the winter time, you stick that down in there. It's a solid bottom board or on those cool days. These hot days, we just, we just keep it out. It's 85 degrees right now, so I'm just gonna leave this thing out. That means the bees won't have to work as hard to cool everything. And I really like solid bottom boards when it's really cool. But when we start getting mid 80s on average and higher, I really like the option of being able to pull this out. I think in summer it helps reduce the stress a little bit. And um, the other thing is, I haven't tried this out, but I will be. You can put diatomaceous earth or maybe a thicker layer of oil down in here and people are noticing bees, not bees, beetles, small hive beetles dropping down and falling down in there and perishing. So we're going to try that out and see how good it is at killing those beetles. But before I forget, Apame, who makes these pollen traps, is running a sale right now. You can get them for 10% off. If you go to the link below and type in, as you're, I guess you're checking out and everything, they've got a promo code. It's, I'll leave it right here where you can see it. It's pollen 10, P-O-L-L-E-N, the number 10. And just on the, the pollen trap slash bottom board, it is 10% off. So if you're needing one, they also mentioned if you've purchased one in the last 30 days that you can message them and they will reimburse you that 10% on however many you bought. So that is great. The other thing I like about this thing is that it is a, you know, a bottom board. So it's not just a pollen trap. There's a lot of them out there that are just pollen traps. So the rest of the year, you're still getting use out of this thing. One of the options that you may or may not like is the fact that it comes with screws that you can drill into the bottom board. The con to this is the fact that if you're like me and you like to lift up that bottom board, and look underneath for swarm cells, you no longer can do this. You have to pull the individual frames out. But the plus side of it is that it's not coming loose from there. And here in the front, get those bees out of the way. You can, they've got this nice landing board right here. This one's been on for a little while. And you can, carefully shut this up and then you have this knob right here and let me get this right there we go and now you twist it and now that is in place 
There's screens right here. Plus you have the tray pulled at the bottom. There's a screen bottom board. If you need to move this hive, you don't have to worry about the bees coming out the front. You don't have to worry about um, the bees overheating because they have ventilation here. They have ventilation at the bottom. And the lid um, that comes with the kit, if you get the whole kit, um, also has ventilation. So you have several options with these pollen traps slash bottom boards. So if it was just a, a pollen trap or just a bottom board, I don't think it'd have such value, but this is a, my favorite thing from Apame. One other thing that I forgot to mention, as more and more we're hearing about the Japanese hornets or murder hornets moving in, these Apame entrances really give you a nice little advantage because those hornets cannot fit in there, neither can the European hornets, and that prevents some of the bigger pests that the bees struggle with a little bit more from gaining entrance and really doing a lot of damage. So these entrances can be nice, but they also can be removed if you want to open that up more. Let's put this pollen in a bag and just look how deep this is right here. I'm telling you what, this is so much healthier than even honey, but if you mix it with honey, it is like food from heaven. You mix it with a little bit of nice, thick quality yogurt, not the cheap stuff. This is pollen and honey we're talking about here. So you get the good stuff, and then you put this in there, and you put some honey, and then you put a little bit more honey, <laughs> and then you eat it. And then you get those. No, that's not how that works. But anyways... <laughs> That's for of all the hours of beekeeping. Um, and Laurel working me so hard. <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do now is just put this in a Ziploc bag. You can put it in glass containers as well. And some people dry this and dehydrate it. But I prefer just to keep it like that. And that is a nice bit of pollen right there. And we are just going to close this, this up, get the air out of it, and we are going to freeze it and use it as we need, or we're going to save it for our queen. So we've been doing this throughout this spring. I have a couple more of them in here, and just have these socked away for when we do some queen rearing, we can give our queens the best nutrition. Right now, again, I'm not using it. We have a lot of natural pollens coming in, but I will be this summer. You'll probably see me do it in a video. But yeah, you can get these bottom boards through the link in the comment below. And if you go through their promo co code area and do pollen 10, you will get 10% off from what I understand through summer. So thanks for watching this video. And if you have any questions about this product, leave it below.